just going to shoot you guys straight, man, because I was very broke and I wanted to get very rich. If there's ever a time to make a YouTube video, it's the day that you sell your first company for billions of dollars. If you spoke like us from London, you'd be like, bro, yeah. Now, the key turning point where it really blew up. The 21st century way of doing business is, is so different. I would spend a grand and honestly make 12, 13 grand back. I have not invested in a course that's been bad. I truly put all of my success down to the masterminds and the courses and the mentors. This is free consultancy. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> but you cannot even see with the proof that it's real. Yeah. So you are just fucked. We, um, we've been to loads of networking events mm. and I think something about us is when we go to them, like we just want, we're only ever going to be ourselves. Yeah. Like I, I don't ever enter a room with like an ego of like, look how much I've done. But I also don't enter a room like, all how these other human beings because mm, I still yeah. feel like I'm doing my thing as well. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like when we met, like, like bless the cigars, because it was because of the cigars, yeah? Yeah. Straight away, like, me and Cam both kind of felt the same way. We was like, no, I like this guy, man. And it, obviously, the story was inspirational, but even that aside, it's just like, I like this guy. Yeah. And, and I think what was good is that everything that I doubt, he, he just like... I like it. I need, I need Tris to meet people like you. Yeah. I'll say to Tris, look, you can make a lot of money in this space. You can do yeah, this, you yeah. can do that. It's real businesses, you know? It's not just online. He's like... Yeah. Yeah, kind of. But you see, when Tris meets people, he's so yeah. once he sees it, that's it. It's yeah. done now, it's confirmed. Yeah. yeah. So seeing it and then hearing the story, um, and also your authenticity in the reaction, bro. Mm. Like, like you wasn't just like, yeah, so I just, you know, sold my business for once. <laughs> like, you was just like, you was, you was basically like, if you spoke like us from London, you'd be like, bro. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just sold for yeah. 47 figures. That's like, why that picture kills me. Yeah, that well, picture yeah. is so offensive. In that we're picture, we were saying, took your shit, took your, your shit, we all took your shit. Um, so yeah, it was sick to meet you, bro. And obviously ever since, it's only been like a week, but it's just been inspiring, man. Like I've been mm, watching yeah. your YouTube. We've both been watching your YouTube. Um, I am going to start off with, the milestone you've just hit, bro. Like, let's let's talk about the milestone you just hit. We'll go backwards before, but what's 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 happened, man? Are we talking about the YouTube or the exit? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he was ready right, for us. All right, all right all let's right. start on the let's start on the, let's start on the exit. Let's start yeah. on the exit. I think it's only fair. Yeah. What a wild ride. I mean, um, I think one thing that benefited me was I was in a mastermind with this guy called Dan Bradbury, mm. he uh, a British entrepreneur, and I was having lunch. One day, you know, it was a mastermind event. We were at lunch and he asked me this question. He said, so Will, when are you going to sell? I was like, oh, I can't, I can't sell. It's a, a course business. It's like named after me. It's my voice and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, no, you, you can sell. It just comes down to the, the buyer and the price. So he said, if you sell right now, you might get 20 grand for it or 50 grand for it or something you'd probably sell to someone who's maybe not the best buyer. You certainly wouldn't sell to a fund or anything like mm. that. But he said, if you engineer it correctly over the next maybe six, you know, 12 months plus, then you could sell for a great price to a, to a great buyer. So I said to him, well, what are the steps? What do I need to do to make that a reality? And obviously he, he mentored me through doing that and, and taught mm. me kind of how to do it in stages to remove myself and departmentalize the company and engineer it for sale. Mm. So that's what I got on with over the next kind of two years. And then when it came to, I think it was last November, and this is, you know, fast forward two and a half years, the business is doing really, really well. We've got a team of 16 people, we're doing hundreds of thousands a month. And I was sat in the cafe of the, uh, the address mm -hmm. and I was writing in my journal and I, I asked this question, if money didn't exist, what would I do with, with, with my day for mm. fun? You know, if I didn't have to work or do calls or do meetings or, or anything. And my number one favorite thing in the world is to talk about business and share business ideas and help people grow and talk about, you know, the margin and the P and L and the ads and customer acquisition and blah, blah, blah. So I thought, well, I've got pretty much all the money I need. You know, I've bought loads of real estate, which is my retirement. So I'm kind of good there. The business is crushing it. So maybe if I sell the business, you know, that accolade of selling to, to PE for a, hopefully a multi seven figure sum, I can go and do business consulting 
afterwards mm. and I can use the, the history, you know, seven years of building a pretty good business, scaling it very, very far, exiting to private equity for multi seven figures, winning the 10 million award. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to sell. So literally that mm. when I was sat there having a coffee, I WhatsApped Dan, Dan Bradbury. Mm. And I said, look, dude, I've, I've decided now's the time I want to sell. Can you mentor me through the sale? And then Dan introduced me to my uh, M&A advisor, this guy, Dominic, who actually found us the buyer that we ended up selling to. And then fast forward eight months, uh, we, we closed. I got, we got the wire, made the YouTube video. <laughs> the rest is history. Yeah. So. How do you like, so it's interesting because I feel like your outlook was similar to mine in the sense of you kind of didn't see it as something that could sell really at some point. Yeah. yeah. Um, and to be honest, I probably am the same as you. I don't think I did either until like, I didn't think of that really. When we thought about potentially exiting later on in our life, it would more be the, we even said it would be the recruitment arm, didn't yeah. we? More than, we said it because yeah. we've got the recruitment part of our business as well. So we thought that would make sense to set up, but not this, it's online. Do you feel that like now you've done that, like you've kind of opened a lot of people's eyes, which may be why the YouTube is going mm. off. Mm. Without a doubt, without a doubt, like, yeah, I remember when I made that video, it got traction very quickly. Mm. And I started getting a lot of the same messages from quite large business owners in, in our space. If I said mm -hmm. the names, you would probably know the yeah, names. Yeah. And they were like, how, they were just confused. They were like, what, I mean, what, what, what how did you sell? Who did you sell to? What, did, yeah. what, what multiple did you get? Like, no one, and people kept saying, you know, no one's ever done that before. Yeah, like yeah, you've, yeah, you've, it. you've done it. And then everyone started booking calls with me to say, can you introduce me to your M&A advisor? Sick, Could, are, are the PE firm buying any other similar companies? And yeah, can, can you, imagine. can you mentor me through it? You know, there's one massive fitness guy, I, I won't name names, but one yeah. massive fitness guy here in Dubai who uh, I introduced to Dominic and he's now helping him sell his so company. Sick. So more you've good opened the stuff. door, bro. Yeah. Like, I can't yeah. lie, you've opened the, the door. And, and I definitely want to give you your flowers in the sense of, for someone like myself, who I'm definitely new to the e-learning space, um, I'd say like I'm, yeah, a year, under a year experience. Like I've, I've been very experienced in the online space and the sales training space, but to go into e-learning is mm. completely new to me. For me, it's mad inspirational because mm. Like he said, like, of course, I know that there's money in the space. Like on a month to month, day to day, we close deals, we make money. That's just like the bare minimum of getting into e-learning, right? But to think of it like that on that magnitude, I can't lie, I hadn't thought, had you? No, do you know what I hadn't though? When I came into this, I almost used to feel like I didn't have a real business. Exactly. I used yeah, to say yeah, that to yeah. people, like I don't, I, people would say, but you have a business, I'd be like, I don't really have a business. I'd be like, I'd sit in my Ooh. room and I, I, I make deals and I don't really have a business. But it is an actual business. I feel like the 21st century way of doing business is, is so different. So even like you had a, a very successful business, but you, you had 16 members of staff, like a traditional brick and mortar business to make the money you were making, you'd need, mm. you'd probably have a big office, yeah, loads fine. of members of staff. And that's what makes it feel like a business. But that isn't really fair. Like, did it's you, almost did like you we're have selling that? ourselves. Like when, when you was like before the exit, what, what did your business look like? Yeah, well, it just, it just slowly grew. I mean, um, yeah, it's just, it's just real problem solving really. I mean, one minute it was me and then I got overwhelmed with email support. So I hired my best ever customer to do email Sick. support. That's Sick. smart, yeah. You know, so I just, there was this, this guy, Paul, and I said, Paul, listen, you know, you've been a client for maybe a year. You know what you're doing. You are a customer. You've bought the program. So you're, you're, there's a lot of integrity there. Mm. Can you just answer the emails for me, please? And he was like, yeah, no problem. So first member of staff. Sick. The next problem was too many people were, were upselling into one-to-one -one coaching calls that my time ran out mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So I hired my best ever coaching client, this guy, Tom and mm. said, dude, he, he was with me for about a year, year and a half. And I said, if I give you 32 pounds per call, can you just take over the one-to-one -one coaching? There's the second member of staff. I'm gonna jump in here, do you know why? Because I think the big gem that you're highlighting is the fact that, and I always say this, don't I? I always say this to you, like to go to look at the people who are your biggest fans or followers or supporters or clients, I think is always smart. 
Like a lot of people would think like, why would you do that? But I mm. think they've invested in you. Mm. They, they're, they're probably more invested in you than your best friend sometimes. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like they probably know, they probably know more, follow more. We've got someone, like look at Laura. If we yeah, spell yeah, something yeah. wrong, she'll DM us. Yeah, hey yeah, guys, yeah, 100%. Like, and Laura's originally come through the ecosystem. So yeah, sorry to jump in, but I yeah. really agree with that. Dude, 100%. And you know what? The PE firm that bought us, they actually recently said to me, uh, I, I can't remember the context, but they basically said the number one asset of this company is the team. Mm -hmm. Because he said, like, when I meet with Tom, who still works for us, like, six years on, and when I meet with Paul, who oh, still works it. with us, six years on, these the first few hires have never left. Um, he was like, they love it, and they know so much, and they love the customers, they love the product, they love mm -hmm. the team, they work super hard, they bring great ideas to the mm -hmm. table. It's like mini wills. Yeah, 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 yeah. literally. Yeah. Do, do you know what it is as well, though? That's a testament of having a good product. So yeah. If you didn't have a good product, they would have never loved true. you in the first place. That's they true. would have hated you. can only have, like, diehard fans if after someone's bought something from you, if someone still loves you after they've paid you money, yeah. Yeah. you've got to give it them something pretty decent. Do you feel you always had that? So, like, you, what, what is the actual product? I, I, I don't think we've even spoke about that, bro. Like, what is the product? Dude. <laughs> have we spoke about that? Mate, no, we did. We on the on the on the yacht. We mentioned it. I don't think I was there. <laughs> let let me tell you the story of how this whole thing happened because this all happened by accident. Yeah. Right? So if we rewind all those years, so like I was saying to you earlier, my first proper career was as a DJ and a record producer. Mm. That was my first proper profession, right? And um, from the age of about twenty one, I got signed to a decent label, got an agent and a manager, and started touring all over the world. But the money was 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 not the best it was quite sporadic like mm. at my height i was getting paid six seven hundred pounds per show but only dj maybe once a week mm. twice a week sometimes nothing for three four five weeks mm. you know yeah. so if i did a tour i might make seven eight grand yeah. and then nothing for three four five weeks and then one show for 700 and then nothing for two weeks so when i got to about 25 26 years old one of my friends I, I remember this very clearly i used to go to the gym with this guy he had a kid he then bought this really nice big house. He had a very good job. And I started to feel like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm missing the stability. I'm missing the income, you know? So I started looking for other ways to make money and I found trading, started trading, uh, did quite well through beginner's luck, then wiped almost all the accounts, invested in some education, basically learned what I was doing. And fast forward a year and a half, I was doing a bit of music trading pretty much full-time from home and i had a twitter that i started to chat to friends and other traders mm. with like 400 followers mm -hmm. one day one of my friends slash followers wissam messaged me and he was oh, local to I where know wissam. yeah i know wissam i know him from crypto days i know wissam yeah yeah that was my guy like, only online let's not go down that tangent oh okay. is it but, oh, but, 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 but anyway... Um, but I haven't spoken to him in years, though. This is like crypto yeah, early. He, dude, he said to me, if I PayPal you £50, pounds, yeah. can I learn from you, basically? Yeah. So, and that was... No one had ever offered me money to, mm. to teach them, yeah. to learn, learn from me. So I was like, yeah, no problem. So we made a one-page Word document f for him where I just shared, you know, this is how I do this, this is how I do that, these are the markets we're going to be trading. And you know, he went off happy with the, the Word document. And it just occurred to me, if I ask a few of the followers whether they want this or need it, I wonder if they'd buy it. And a few of them did, like mm. two or three people, PayPal me 50, 50 pounds, took the Word document, and they started giving me feedback. They were like, this is not covered in there. How do we do this? Blah, blah, blah. Mm. So the early few clients actually forced me to find product market fit and make sure. it better. Yeah. And as I made it better, then it turned into an ebook, and I charged like £99 or something like that. Then a Dropbox folder of videos in the files and started charging like £250, £350. Then I started doing some coaching with some of the clients and charging them, you know, maybe £350, £450 for the videos and files, two, three hundred a month for the coaching. And it just slowly mm. got a bit bigger, a bit better, mm. a bit of a higher price. And that first year, I think it was 2018, I sold the £50 thing to Wissam in like April. And by the end of the year, I'd made about £27,000, right? Which was a bloody lot of money to me back then. Fuck yeah. me. That was substantial. What year is this? 2018. Okay. 
yeah, 2018. Mm. So it was starting to work, but it still wasn't kind of a real business. Not quite yet, <laughs> right? It wasn't a real business yet. And then 2019, it really started to go. Like I started a YouTube channel to try and get more traffic. Yeah. And then I was sending the Twitter traffic to a proper website by then, the YouTube channel uh, traffic to a proper website. And I had like a bronze thing for 500 pounds, a gold thing for like 750, a platinum thing for a thousand pounds. And you had a following as well. What was your following like? By then it was maybe one and a half thousand Twitter followers, two, three, four thousand subscribers on YouTube. That second year, we did just below 300K, mm. right? Then I was like, this is, this is. What, what was the change serious. there? What did you put in from, to go to 27 to 300K? Cause that's a, that's a big this jump. Is, this is free consultancy right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, well, that's, that's, that's it. <laughs> this is pretty, it's pretty small, but um, the two things that changed were pricing. Mm -hmm. Pricing's a massive lever and traffic. So more traffic, uh, uh, higher prices, Word of mouth from the, the early clients as well. So mm. they were giving good feedback, good testimonials that I would put on the website. Mm. And it started to compound on itself. Now, the key turning point where it really blew up was, do you guys know who Alex Becker is? Yes. No, I don't. Yeah, so he was one of the first and biggest kind of e-learning people. And yeah. now he owns a, you know, nine-figure software company called, called Hyros. They actually just sold. Yeah. Um, and I saw an ad from him on YouTube all about YouTube ads and sales funnels. Mm -hmm. And I was, I didn't have a clue about YouTube ads or sales funnels. So thank God I bought his program. And this was December 2020, no, December 2019, I think. And then I turned ads on in January, 2020, just before COVID made this webinar and I would run ads to an opt-in to a webinar to a $2,000 product. That year we did about 1.4 million in 2020. And that was buying that product. Yeah, and it was a similar thing, way more traffic, mm -hmm. much higher price, one product so it's much simpler, which was a suggestion from Sam Ovens. Yeah, and man, the it was just insane. It was so... So this product was, um, it was uh, all pre-recorded. So that product, by then that we were selling was basically a full-fledged online coaching program. So video course, group coaching, one-to-one -one coaching, resources, ev everything. It was like the best of, of, of everything. So they and got one-to-one -one within that as well. They got three one-to-ones with- And that was oh. at 2K. Yeah, so $2,000. They got three one-to-ones with Tom, email support from Paul, and uh, the training program, which was really developed by then, because this was mm. two and a half, three years in by that stage. And things were really going well. You know, by the end of that year, we were doing a good 200, 250, 300K a month. Then I moved, one of, the next problem was, was tax, mm. right? So then I moved to Dubai in uh, April, 2021. Then we moved from a webinar to a sales call funnel and then mm -hmm. started building a sales team. And to cut a long story short, the next two years, we went from about 250 a month up to about, with some consulting stuff, about 800, 850 a month. Uh, and that's just before I sold. So that's kind and of- that the was, Is that with the same product? Exact same product. Yeah, same Exact man. same product. What, what made you change from the webinar to the sales team? Yeah, I was thinking that. Yeah, good question, man. Um, so the webinar, so when I started running ads, January, 2020, I would spend a grand and honestly make about 12, 13 grand back. So like a 13x cash ROI month mm. one, which was, it was just fucking insane. That's filthy. So we scaled further and further and further and further and further. And eventually when we got to about a quarter of a million a month, we were doing about 1.8 cash. So if we spent hundred grand, we'd make 180 mm -hmm. back. So, so 1.8 and we, I joined, I think it was Cole Gordon's mastermind and Cole tipped us over the edge. He was like, look, if you raise the price and hire very good closers, you can obviously raising the price is going to improve efficiency. A sales team gives you a bit more control over conversion and scale. And straight away, about two months later, we were back at about four X cash four four five mm -hmm. eight, uh, four X, five X cash. Mm -hmm. So then we actually came back down 
and then scaled right back up and just very slowly hired reps. Every few months, Sick. another rep, another rep, another rep. No reps left as well. So there was no team churn, which helped kind of propel us a bit faster. Mm-hmm. Um, and that kind of led up to last year. And then I just got everything that I ever wanted. I mean, I know it sounds mm-hmm. a bit crude, mm-hmm. but... Remember, st- we're cutting uh, yeah, the crap. Not here. Remember, we're it's cutting the crap. Here. We're, we're <laughs> cutting the crap. Not we're cutting the crap. Look, here. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to shoot you guys straight, man. And I'm just going to shoot your audience straight as well. I'm, I'm not going to dress this up. I started that business because I was very broke and I wanted to get very rich. Mm-hmm. And last year, I owned multiple millions of pounds worth of real estate outright, bought with cash, mm-hmm. seven figures uh, after tax in the bank. And I was more in a place where I've done that now. I've got what I feel like is enough. Mm. You know, I don't need 50 bloody million or something. Yeah. Um, I just got the cash to, uh, to buy this place with cash, this, this yeah. apartment as well. So I was like, I've got seven figures cash. I, I'm, I'm about to own my apartment. So no mortgage, no rent. My expenses are very, very, very low, like three, four K a month. Mm. It's m- m- paid many times over by the rent from the real estate portfolio alone. Sick. So if I wanted to, I could just stop working right now and, yeah. and never work again. Mm. So passion. I was going to say, so jumping, curious. So like, where did the, 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 the thought process behind some of these things? So do you have any business background prior? Mm. No. And I can tell that, which, is, which I think is sick. That's why I wanted to highlight it. Because mm. you, you, you seem business savvy, but you also seem like you're very self-taught. Um, something Cam always says, which I haven't, I'm yet to do, but I'm very willing to do, like I said to you before, is investing in courses and the right yeah, people. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. Sorry to cut yeah, you. Go on. I was going to say, I feel like a, a very big part of this has been investing in your yeah. education and masterminds and, and You've done that the with e-learning chess. space. Yeah. yeah. It, would, you say, would you say that that's the biggest thing that, that, that made a shift for you? Dude, I truly put all of my success, pretty much all of my success, down to the masterminds and the courses and the mentors because i just wouldn't know i mean how do you know yeah like how do you know how to hire and train and ramp a rep if you've never done it in your life well you need to either spend months figuring it out and wasting time and money yeah or just go to a sales training company and buy a program or hire a rep or hire them for mentoring or something and every time i had a problem and that i was stuck on I would just say, right, who is the best at this? And if they had a mastermind, I'd buy it. If they, had a, if they didn't and they had a course, I would buy it. And if they didn't, didn't have a course, I'd pay them for one-to-one to, to solve it. So every, and every time I bought a mastermind, it's noticeable, the impact. Mm. Like when I joined easy. Alex Becker's mastermind and we went from 300K a year to 1.4 million a year, in, in 12 months, yeah. all, all thanks to Alex. Yeah. Yeah. All, all thanks to Alex, not me. How, so. do, you, how do you sieve like, so, as you can probably tell, like he's a, a big advocate for that. Like that's the space he's from. Um, I'm not against it. It's just new to me, and I think something about me. I think it's a blessing and a curse. Is I'm very self-taught. Um, things like even what you just said about the sales team. Like I guess why I get so excited hearing this because some of these skills we actually naturally have, but we mm. haven't honed in on or scaled yet. So for example, I've built sales teams for six, seven years. We got we easily got. To seven figures in the first year, like I was able to help many people in sales be able to get to six figures in their first six months. Like I know how to build a sales team, but outside of the online space. So now, obviously, I'm in this space. I think, okay, cool. How do you sieve through who is investment worthy? Like you've gone for some goats, man. Like you've gone for Cole Gordon. Like I don't know Alex Becker, but he sounds very credible. Yeah, you see, you, I've put Alex Becker Sam Ovens. Like these are these are people that they're credible people, you know. Like, but. How did you just make that decision? Like, how did you know they were? Well, well, uh, well uh, let's actually look at it. So why did I hire Alex? Um, I saw one of his ads, booked a call, did research in the meantime, looked at his YouTube, uh, spoke to some people that had worked with him, and that allowed me to make the decision. So maybe it was a bit of luck, mm. but that's how I made that decision. Mm. Sam Ovens, I'd followed him on YouTube for so long. Mm. So I felt there was a lot of trust there. I felt like he was real and genuine and I'd, if his numbers were true, he was doing very good numbers. Yeah. So that led me to join Sam. I think Cole Gordon was a recommendation from someone from Sam's mastermind, Okay. I think. Yeah. Um, so that was how I went into Cole's and the mastermind that I'm in right now is a copywriting mastermind with this guy, Alan Sultanich. And that was, I was introduced to Alan from a friend who'd been in his mastermind. So. 
that was word of mouth that kind of yeah. got me in there. But yeah. I think that ego can sometimes stop you. Yeah. I tell things like this. Do you, but do you know what I like about it though? I, I think if you're in the e-learning space and you don't, not you don't, but you won't buy an e-learning package, you don't believe in the space. Yeah, I agree with you though. You don't believe in the space because how can you teach people online but you don't want to be taught online? Dude, I think it was... It's true. I think Cole... true. I'm sure it was Cole Gordon that once said to me like, if you can't buy, you can't sell. Mm. I, I, it might have been Sam. Yeah, that's basically what you would say. Every time we have a call, um, Will, yeah, like if someone seems like a good guy and they're sounding like giving it all of that and then it gets to the end and they, they're just scared to act. He's just like, he's a pussy and he's gonna fail forever. Yeah. <laughs> and I see it too. I know, I that's, too. that's some cut. Do you know, do you know why <laughs> I say that? Because if the pitch is good, if you've researched, so people when they get we on the know call, our products good, they, like, they know, know us, they know of us already, they've researched, they've asked around, they've self diagnosed that this is the problem. I want to get into sales. It's the only thing stopping you is just fear. You're just someone that doesn't take action, which is fine, but. I'm a, I'm a great believer. The reason I'm able to slap everyone with that is because I might be wrong once out of 100, but I know when I wanted to learn, my first thing was at SMMA, when I wanted to learn, I got on the court and I just paid this guy. I didn't have the money. I just thought, you know what? Have that. Teach me. Yeah. You've got to do it, man. Yeah, yeah. I remember Sam Ovens once said to, uh, to me, he said, if you've never bought an expensive mastermind, you can't sell an expensive mastermind because mm. you don't believe that it's real. Mm. If you've never met someone that makes half a million a month, you can't make half a million a month mm. because you don't I believe that, that it's real. Yeah. And someone commented on one of my YouTube videos recently um, and said something like, uh, the, I think it was the Cole Gordon one where Cole came, spoke at my mastermind, it was a recording. Mm. And he said something like, this is bullshit. Nobody makes four million a month. That is impossible. This is a lie. Cole is is is, is a liar. You are a liar. It's not real. Mm -hmm. I was like, you just don't. I, I, I kind of felt bad for the guy because I was like, it's true. Yeah. And yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. not only yeah. is it so, it, it, it not only is it completely and verifiably true. Mm. Yeah. But you cannot even see with the proof that it's real. Yeah, so you yeah. are just fucked. I, 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 I feel sad <laughs> for people like that. Do you know what though? Can I, okay, can I be honest though? Because I think you both have more. Tris was one of those guys. No, no, no. I was a not... year ago, you would have been. Let's he let's might have been let's, commenting yeah. on those photos. Let's get him. Saying, <laughs> I, was, no. I was a little bit. The reason why I say I was a little bit one of those guys is not because I didn't believe people. Is because so my come up was very much so when I was twenty years old. Um, I got kicked out at a young age, 20 years old, I had a few options. Most of the options that were surrounding me at the time where I was from were negative. I chose a positive route. And a friend of mine was doing high ticket closing um, for an investment based company in the city of London. And he started making 15, 20 grand a month. And we was 20, 21. Funny enough, he's actually in, the, um, he's landed in Dubai today. And funny enough, he reminds me of you so much, yeah, my good friend, Charlie. Now. He opened the door for me. He got me a job interview. Because I had done the events and the DJing and the radio shows, he said, bro, you'd be good at sales. I know you would. You can sell an event. You can this, that, the other. So I jumped in. First year, made 106K. From then onwards, up anywhere between 250 and 350 consistently a year, right? Mm -hmm. And that was just as a sales rep. That was all. I didn't have no responsibility for business. Now, this was at a stage where there was no crypto, no one was online, this, that, and the other. And they kind of brainwashed us, which I understand why now, to think that if you're not doing football or music, you will not make money like this ever. And I believed it, which was good for me at the time because it helped me to make the money, right? And it helped me to have a successful career. But I think it damaged me when I came out of that because when I came out of that bubble, I sort of looked around at probably around the time of like 2020 when I moved to Dubai lockdown, I came here and I was quite shocked by the amount of successful people I met that had all these different types of businesses. I met people in tech making millions. Like mm. I saw so much, but I was very shocked. And I was almost like, I was a bit, probably a bit negative in the sense, because I just thought, these guys can't really be making, like, because I've just been told for seven years, you can't. So I think what happened with me was even when I'm, if it wasn't for me in Cam, I don't think I would even really be in this space. I had an audience for six years. My audience has been very organic. I never sold to them once because I just felt like it was just bad and that like, you don't sell to your audience and you look like a trader and a Forex guy. And you... so I had this whole perception. And then now, fast forward, I go into this yacht full of like everyone here who's just like e-learning rich. And the thing is, it's so credible. Like 
meeting yourself, like meeting Joss, meeting uh, Mike, like even um, James, like just people that mm. you can just tell, like you can see it. You, you know these people are making the money. Mm. So I do, I, I don't want to just diss those people because I was them once and I get it. I, it, I get it, them. There's a lot of fake out there. That's the thing. That's there the is problem. a lot of crap out That's there. That's why I asked Will, how did he sift through it? Because mm. there is so many shit people mm. and he's just gone and kind of just gone win, win, win. And I think... I don't, yeah, I just think, like, I don't even want to say, it's not luck, it's never luck. But some people, surely it doesn't go that well for them. Do you know what I mean? There must be people. I think my, my situation has been similar, obviously not to that level, but I've not invested in a course that's been bad. But I think that's because I'm investing in the right things. And this might be ego. I think I could probably work that out on my own. You can. That's the, that's the thing in the... But I think that's a problem. I no, don't think that's a good that's, trait. That's the thing in the space. I... I will always want to let people know that you can learn this on your own, mm. but it will take a long time. Mm. So this is just it's a true. shortcut. You know, right, That's always right. my, my thing. I've only ever paid yeah. someone for a shortcut because me, I've got an ego myself. I'm like, well, you, don't, you can't know more than me. You can't. It's not that. It's just you've put in the reps. You've been doing it for four or yeah, five years. Okay, right. I'm just going to pay you. It's like me meeting you, isn't it? Really, yeah. I've had a fast track and it's like yeah. you meeting me. Yeah. We both had a fast track. Yeah. Or it's of just each other, downloading. I've just downloaded your sales skills. Yeah. It's easy. I hang out with you all day. I've downloaded your sales skills. You've been selling for 10 yeah, years. True. I've been selling for four years. Yeah. But I've, I've, I can get very close to you because I've just downloaded. That's yeah. what I feel like the e-learning space is. I never want anyone to think that I'm selling mm. you a secret. There is no secret Forex trade or anything. Yeah. I've just done it for a long time. I've made all those mistakes. Pay me and you won't. Yeah. Yeah. Someone, this is another YouTube comment that I saw. The other day, someone said, why would someone pay? I think they were talking about my friend because one of my friends has a stop drinking alcohol program Yeah. that's designed for entrepreneurs, high level entrepreneurs that are like oh, messing sure. up their family, messing up their business and life. So it's quite expensive. It's eight, eight and a half thousand dollars. Yeah. And someone commented saying something like, why would you pay that guy when you can kind of learn to stop drinking on your own? Just watch YouTube videos and maybe read a book and stuff. Yeah. And he's not wrong. Mm. He's not wrong. Mm. Like, if you want to stop, I think you can maybe stop. I'm not an expert, but, you know, yeah. maybe. There's books that you can read for £10, £15. You could maybe hire a therapist for one, two, three hundred pounds But Edge. Oh, shit, I just said his name. <laughs> no, we'll, no, we'll, we'll, that. we'll get rid of it. So this guy's Edge, one of my yeah. my... So I'll know that that point is the point to get rid of. Cool. So my friend, who I will not name, <laughs> who I will not name, uh, who, who has this program, he's spent years looking at the science, working with a lot of people to dial in mm. exactly how, how it can be done in the fastest way, mm. you know. And he's just done all the hard work, put in the time, all the research, mm. you know, the wins and the failures, and condensed it into a program that saves you the time, saves you th the getting it wrong and blah, blah, blah. So, and you, sales is the same, you know mm, what I mean? Yeah. If you try hard enough for long enough, you know, you could probably do quite well. Yeah. But would it's you... True, actually. You just want to get it right. Yeah, yeah. I, think I, I think need to look at myself because the I when sales, I do, I do, you're right, that's why I sell it so confidently because I know if you spend three months with me, six months with me, a yeah. year with me, I know I can. I know yeah. I can save you so many years that I've got in the game. I think with everything, it's just speed. Like, imagine if you had to learn. Imagine if you could never be taught anything, and your whole life you just had to learn from experience. This didn't take you a hundred years before yeah, you actually yeah, learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My thing is, there's some things that I'll learn. Maybe going to the gym, I'm not going to get a PT. I'm okay to just learn how to do a bench press on Depending my own. Depending on your goal, yeah. I guess, isn't it? But for the business, who knows how to do this? And yeah, yeah, who knows how to do it quickly? How much does it cost? Uh, you, five grand, bad. all right, there we go. Now I know how to do it in three months. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think the main thing is just, yeah, like you said, is getting the people. I guess also when you do get higher ticket, I don't want to make a sweeping statement, but you do get better quality. What do you mean? Like if so, you're paying someone 10 grand, 15 grand, 20 grand, surely you get a better quality, no? Yeah, I think as a, as a sweeping statement. I'll yeah, that. like yeah. generally speaking. And especially, I think it isn't hard to work out I don't think it's that hard to work out who's credible as no, well. No, I don't. I think it's, it's easy, easy, isn't man. it? But I think, you know what it is? I think it's, it's just cost money, doesn't it? Yeah, you know and I, mean? I think it's if you get into it for the wrong reasons. So, like, it, yeah. if you think about it, with what we do, yeah, we're selling sales oftentimes to beginners. 
we could sell it a very different way and probably make more money and be aggressive. We're in Dubai. We could. We got nice views right yeah, now. Yeah, we could, we could say, hey, hey, shit. William, let us go on the balcony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah let's yeah. record some stuff. Let's put on some watches. You could sell it like that. Now, my thing is, if someone sells it like that, normally, it's that's not, good. not actually a good guy. Smoke and mirrors, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, nor, yeah, yeah. My thing is, I buy into people that show the strategy. So, for example, on skill. your YouTube, you talk about the skill. With what you're doing with your consultant, you're not... Yeah, you talk about that you sold for seven figures, but that's not the selling point of the video. Yeah. You talk about the strategy, how I did it, how... Da, 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 da. So, mm -hmm. after watching a video of yours, I know you're credible. I could... We spoke for five minutes. You can tell. I'm sold. Yeah, so it's like, tell, it doesn't actually tell, take man. long to, to get sold into it. Yeah. I just think, just just listen to people, look at their accolades, just listen to the way that they you know think and, 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 and speak and act. And yeah. I think you can tell. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. Going back now to, to obviously you pivoting from DJing into this, uh, which is mad relatable for me, obviously. Like, for you, it's a, that's a whole different career change, right? Was there this motivation? I know you said you was very broke and you wanted to get very rich. Was that suddenly, like, where did that motivation, because, like, the financial level you're at is quite high, but you've also said you don't really care about, I know you want to get higher, but you don't care about 50 million, 100 million, etc. Like, what, what's your relationship with money? Yeah, well, look, here's the thing, right? I've weirdly been an entrepreneur since I was young without even knowing what it was. I'll, I'll give you an example. So I started skateboarding with my friends when mm. I was very young, 12, 12 13, 14. Mm. But instead of just skateboarding, for some reason, we would watch the skateboard videos and I was like, I really want to... I got a camera, I would film them, would edit them. I'd even make DVDs and design covers, but just for fun. Well, that's sick, that's some shit. It's you, my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Everything you're saying is my life. So, I, it's, it, it's almost weird to me, like, why did they not <laughs> think to do that? Yeah. But, but I did. And it, it makes me feel like I must be a natural entrepreneur because that 100. was just what I wanted to do for no gain, for just yeah, fun. Man. So that was that. And then after skateboarding, I got into graffiti. Same. And, um, <laughs> Same. <laughs> you know, I would not only just do graffiti, but I actually started my own graffiti magazine. Right? And yeah. I would, like, interview famous writers and... Um, travel all over England, like taking pictures of the, the trains and the walls and stuff. Yeah. And um, did, did the magazine for, for kind of fun. Yeah. And tried to sell it, you know, but, but that didn't really work out. And then music was next yeah. after that. And in music, again, I wouldn't just DJ with my friends, but I started making my own tracks. Yeah. And trying to get the tracks out there. And, you know, I would make sample packs to sell and you know, merchandise to sell and stuff. So instead of just doing it, I wanted to build it and own it mm. yeah, and, and, so. and, and control it. So when I got into trading, it was only a matter of time before yeah. I built some kind of, I mean, could have, could have been anything. It could have been a prop firm, could have been a trading floor. It just happened to be education. Mm. So it's not like this was one massive accident. It's like yeah. I did it with, mm -hmm. I did it with graffiti. Then I did it with music. Yeah, now I'm doing yeah. it with, with trading. Yeah. Now I'm doing it with business consulting. Yeah. You know, so yeah, I don't know what's going to be next. I super yeah. relate to that. Like the other day I posted, um, like sometimes it, it, it hits me in the face. Like 14 years ago, I was vlogging in uni with a video camera. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't know why. Like I built a platform called Student Link Up. That was, we then did events. And then like I, I had a t-shirt line. And then I did a record label. Then I did a PR. Like, and a lot of the time it wasn't actually for the money. Like, so to hear someone else have a similar journey is encouraging. Is there a goal though, like in your head? So like, cause you don't actually see, you don't actually see materialistic, to be honest. You don't see materialistic at all. But at the same time, you also have achieved. S says the guy with a 40 <laughs> solid gold roll. No, no, honestly, like I've met Wick, like Hunt and so you must have, we all have, we live in Dubai. Like there's people that just love materialism, bro. And I can just tell you're not like that. But there must be goals though. Like I, I, I saw the vision board. Yeah, like, yeah. I see the vision board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw the vision yeah, board. Yeah, yeah, we so saw like, that. There's, there's goals. Yeah. So like, what, what's the overall goal? Like, what's the vision? Like, I forgot that was on the wall. <laughs> I would have taken that down if no, I knew. No, we, I can't that's lie. Sick, we, no, we like that. We yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's I'm all proper. about that, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. I'm Good, all so. about that. All Good. about that. You can't hit a target you can't see, man. Yeah, I mean, the the the, the goal evolves. I mean, when I started trading, the goal, well, I, I actually remember my goal. My goal was to, I wanted to buy two or three investment properties, make enough money to cover all my bills and expenses, and then do music without worrying about the music money. 
Mm. Because my problem was I want to DJ and make music. I, I, ca I, can't, I can't afford an apartment. I can't afford a car, barely. Mm. I can't afford to go on holiday. So I need money. Mm. Right, let me trade to get money and solve that problem. Mm. And then obviously the uh, e-learning company kind of accidentally built itself. But the problem was still money, you know. So for mm. the, that first business, the problem was I need money and, you know, it, it, I wanted to be rich and I realized that it was kind of a possibility along the way, which I think drove me. I was like, oh shit, I could actually do quite well yeah. here and, and do really well. Yeah. And then at the end of that company, when I was sat in the cafe, the goal then was no longer money. Money is solved now. Mm -hmm. So now it's like, I feel empty and I feel bored mm -hmm. and I don't feel like I'm, I mean, why, what, what, what am I doing? Yeah. So now currently the current problem is fun and fulfillment mm. and feeling good about life and enjoying life you know and that's when i asked myself that question if money didn't exist because yeah. it kind of is it did but well, i've kind of solved it now well what will i do with my life now yeah you know and uh, someone said to me the other day it was actually a friend in the gym he was like why why not stop for a while now and I was yeah like, well, why not that's a good question why not i said to him what am i going to do yeah, you're like, an active man. You're yeah. like me, I can tell. I mean, what, what the hell am I going to do? Like walk around the marina and go gym and have a yeah. coffee and go for dinner? I, and... I just want to say, because I, I like things when I'm listening. I really like when you said that money's solved now. <laughs> I just really like that personally. Just my, myself, I was really happy listening to that. So you might catch me smiling at you sometimes. Uh, it's because I really like what you're saying. Just to let you know. Tris knows what, what yeah, I, mean, yeah. I had to say that. Yeah. I really like oh. that. He probably didn't carry a listen after yeah, that. Yeah, no, I really like that. that. He was yeah. just dreaming there, yeah, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, I really yeah. like that. I did. I did, I did. No, honestly, yeah. like, so do you know what, like, to, to sort of bring it back to us here, yeah, where we're mad inspired right now, um, and I actually want to fill you in on where we are in life, Will, yeah? Me and Cam met a year ago. We met on the yacht. Um, very similarly to how we had met, funny enough. We met on the yacht. We got on. Um, I then did a podcast with Raheem, CEO of Cast. Um, and I said to him, I didn't know what he'd done. I just saw everything online as Amazon FBA, SMMA. I thought it was all the same. But I said to him, I'm going on this podcast. Didn't know him, but I said, come along. I think you'd benefit from just being in the right room, yeah? Um, probably the best thing I've ever done because he came along, we connected, and here we are. Now, we started off doing consultancy first. So I was actually doing, because my background is marketing, branding. So I started doing branding um, consultancy clients one-to-one. -one. Um, it got to a point where it's back-to-back, isn't it? Like the yeah. calendar was stacked and kind of hit a ceiling financially because it was hard yeah. to make any more money than what we was making. And, and also it was just so time consuming, very stressful as well, because looking after people's businesses and not necessarily the highest ticket, like 3K, yeah, it wasn't super 3 to 4K, yeah. not people that are willing to just really go at it. So, so those can sometimes be a bit frustrating, those kind of clientele, as you probably know. Mm. So then he was doing um, ads on, he was, do, he was doing ad management for other people as well. So he's, 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 uh, niche, you could say, like his USP was he knew how to make other companies so much money from their ads, right? He like he's done millions and millions for other, yeah. for other companies mm -hmm. from getting their ad funnels properly, and and he taught me how to kind of filter people through and and use my warm audience first because I we did the whole first year just off of warm audience, no paid ads, and we done quite well, really. We got up to like three hundred k in revenue from without even spending money on ads, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so then we got to the point where it's like, okay, he, he had a moment where he met up with his friend and he said, this is gonna, we're not gonna scale with this. It's good, but we can't scale with it. So I said, okay, what are you thinking? Then he said, we need something that looks after itself. So a product that can just look after itself, just like what you had built. So then we got to there. Um, and then when we started this product, so we took, we took two to three months to build it because we really wanted it to be top quality, but that meant we had a pay cut. And it meant that times were gonna be, I don't wanna, one second, because this is going to... Um, so we stopped, we took a pay cut, yeah? And we was transparent about it. Like, we're very transparent online. If we're if times ain't great, they're not great. If they're great, they're great. Um, but we took an intentional pay cut because we chose to take a step back. He stopped to his ad clients. He said, I'm going to build this course. You're going to basically be the star of the show and deliver it. Then the first month we launched it, I was fucking scared because it wasn't selling. Like, and... and it was selling, but it was just. No, I think it sold pre-launch, and then it sold pre-launch very sell well. At all. And then launch, it did. It wasn't selling, and the leads that were coming through were just absolute dog shit. And it, I was just like, oh my god, 
like we've made the wrong decision. And then after about four weeks, what did we tweak? You tweaked something. We tweaked the ad. Yes. The marketing message maybe. Yes. Interestingly, I, even though I, so with the, when I was running ads, my, my media buyer who I worked very closely with, I went back to him and I said, and, and it was, it was interesting because well. I essentially had hired him and I had to like, let my ego go and say to him, Hey bro, we're running ads at the moment. They're not going well. I was like, I want to pay you. Make them go well. <laughs> yeah, literally. Literally, yeah. that, that was yeah, yeah, literally. Thing. It was a, and he was and like, And you know what? It's true. When I think cool. about it, that was a game changer yeah, for us. He was as well. like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, and it's true. It's literally, true. from then, spoke to him. We I paid yeah. him for four sessions, two sessions it was done. I just done the other two just to just to have a catch up and say, look, here's what yeah. we're doing, and da da da. da. And yeah, then we just like, went, and then it just and then the floodgates open. Um, and this was only three months ago, Will. Mm. So mm. three months ago. So then, so we came back to Dubai at the beginning of November. So that's about six weeks ago. In the first month, I woke up one day and said, I'm just going to go way harder on the sales. Like, I'm going to start, get back into my goals. And we're going to go, I think, first month we may have done, like, I think 10K, 15K, which was mad to us. We were so uncomfortable. And I said, we need to get back up I think, to the 50s. I think month two, I think month two, we done about four. Yeah, it was it bad. It's really bad. Four, okay, really bad. And then we came back from Dubai and I said, okay, fuck it. I woke up in the morning. I sent him a message. I said, between now and Christmas, I actually said between now and Christmas, we're going to do 50K. And we ended up doing it like three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then obviously now we're here where it's now flowing with our weeks. We're on like 10K weeks now. Nice. Um, but I know, and again, since going, What's the current bottleneck within the business? I think the bottleneck is... Hmm. So it's not leads. Yeah. It's... Hmm. Um, just an interesting one to say. Because we've just arrived it's at the bottleneck. Don't you think it's just time? We, no, I, I think... Yeah, I think freeing up our time. So at the moment, we, we've, we, get, um, we get good amount of leads. We book a lot of calls. The show up rate isn't good. What, what what's the show rate? Um, num numbers wise, it's, it's, it's I haven't worked it out because it's changed every week because we're changing things. Um, sharp rate I'd say is about about sixty mm, percent, about sixty percent. Um, you don't think that's bad? I don't think our sharp rate's that bad. I feel like I think you know emotionally why? it's felt a bit jarring. Do you know why I might say that? From where from SMMA where I was coming from, you get eighty ninety, but okay. I guess you're talking to business owners as opposed to talking to yeah. people in this space. So you, you don't think 60% is that bad? No, so the, the industry standard for e-learning typically is about 65. Okay. So if you're above 65, you're doing something well. Yeah. If you're below, if you're below 50, something's a bit wrong. Okay, then what would I say the bottom? Then the bottom net could be the sales team because we can book eight, we can, we can look, if tomorrow we said we want to have eight sales calls, we get eight sales calls. Yeah, I just think the only bottleneck is the sales team. It's just if, so I mean, assuming when we're referring to bottleneck is how we can get to 100, 200, 300K. And I just think it's just having a sales team. At the moment, I'm, I'm doing the closing. What's the close rate at the moment? Quali for, so cool, qualified close rate is about, is, is about 50, just over 50%. So very high when it's qualified, but a lot of people jump on who aren't qualified, but say they are. So a lot of calls will be five minutes long because someone will have filled out everything. Yeah, I can afford it. I'll yeah, just filter through straight away. And then, yeah, they'll get on. And then, and then Tris, you know, you can get, you get a smell with someone. Yeah, if you I, don't know, think they can. I know. Jump I've on the, the call for it. Just to go back over, is everything affordable? Uh, no, it's not actually affordable. But what I was hoping is that, yeah, you know, yeah. I could get through We've the all. all uh, and, oh, then, and then I'll pay you next year because of all the money I'm going to make. <laughs> Let me call then, work for yeah, you first. And it's like, oh my God. So we actually get a, a, a lot of that, a decent amount of that. Okay. Um, but yeah, we're at about we're at about a close a day, one or two closes a, a day. And what what's the program price? S three k. And what are the deliverables? Is it a course, group coaching, one to one? So it's a course, all pre recorded, over twenty five modules, um, really in depth videos and depth PDFs, and then they get. A, <laughs> this is where I think everyone's going to tell us we should increase the price. Mm. They get a job role guaranteed at the end of it. <laughs> We're gonna to have to zoom in on that reaction on this edit. <laughs> they get a job role guaranteed at the end of it. Why? Why what? What? what why? I mean, <laughs> it's just why everything, isn't it? It's just why. I don't. I don't want to kind of turn this into like a full-on consulting yeah, 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 kind yeah, of yeah. call. But 
I mean, if you're guaranteeing a roll, then 3K is way too cheap. But well, uh, let me ask you this so I can kind of get my bearings. What, what do you sell on the back end? What do you mean? Like when, when someone buys the, the 3K thing, like, yeah. well, where do they ascend to after that? The only yeah. possible upsell is, is one-to-one, but we're yeah. not actually we pushing pushed that. it yet. Your upsell should not be one-to-one. -one. Your upsell should be uh, uh, the, what's it called? The, the bloody... Uh, the job. Yeah, the job, there's a word for it, a re recruitment kind of arm. Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. 3K for the training and 5K with the job sort of thing. Without a doubt. Yeah, with, yeah without I a doubt. I think we you, know that as You well, shouldn't yeah. be charging three should, should for I, training Should I actually be honest? When we launched this, it was all written out on the whiteboard. 5K was the price. Was the price. 3K was the price shook, without, without it. So I tell yeah. you what happened. Month one, it went badly. <laughs> and then we're all thinking, maybe they're selling for a thousand. Yeah, we Maybe if someone gives us crazy. 500 pounds. And maybe, we're, we're being honest. Yeah, like, maybe, being honest. May, maybe if someone gives us 500 pounds, maybe we might let them in for 500. And it, and it got scary. And <laughs> then, but we're actually on the way to building it up. So it, it, yeah. 3K isn't the price it, it plans to set, but that's a bit comfortable at the moment. We're yeah, right. I think, I think yeah. as a salesperson, I know enough to know that once I just say that's 5K and someone pays it from then, I would never turn back. Yeah. I think we just haven't crossed that line yet. Like, so even like in the last, again, being really transparent, it was only in the last few weeks that we started getting paid in fulls. Only the last two weeks. So that's been the, the, the milestone. So we're still babies. We're babies yeah. where we are with it. But I know we've got crazy potential. Even from studying you, like meetings, everyone we spoke to, Joss, like everyone we've spoken to is like, bro, you guys have got crazy potential. Yeah, bro. here's a question I have, and, and again, not to turn it into a consultant. Yeah, yeah, but, we'll switch it back to Will. But, in a so I was saying that because of the audience that we're targeting, do you think that 5K is more difficult? So I've sold 5K packages, we sold 6K, even sold eight, 8K yeah. a month packages, but this is to business owners who are already making 50, 70, 100K a month already. In this, and co correct me if this is just a limiting belief, but I feel like the audience makes it more difficult to sell it at a higher price point. What do you have to say about that? Are you just going to smack that out of the park? All right. Well, let's kind of try and dismantle it a bit. You're right? allowed to tell us to cut the crap as well, by the way. And you can yeah. tell us if we're being pussies. <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this. So let's take a average lead. They're not particularly rich, not particularly poor, kind of in the middle, mm -hmm. right? Genuinely, if I went to them and I had a brand new Lambo and I said, look, you can have this for five grand, but you've got to have the cash full pay within seven days. Would, would they get it? Yeah. Well, why can't they get it for your program? <laughs> Thank you. Cricket. <laughs> yeah, cricket. Right, thanks. The, thing is, the thing is, we would say this to someone else. That's yes. what's bad. We yeah, would say yeah, that to someone that, else. No, that exact that phrase. Where, where is that from? Because I've used that exact same no, thing. I, just I don't like, know where it's yeah, from. Yeah, it's just I a know. standard ideology. Yeah. It's like a No, but thing. that exactly, the Lamborghini, that's the exact thing. It's true, though. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they would, know you know, they go to the mum, the dad, yeah. the cousin, the, yeah. the friend, the bank. It's just the scale. And, and you know, I want to dive into this to make it less about us and for people that, that are, are coming up or in the space, whatever. It's the scary part of knowing that you it's a short term sacrifice for a long term gain. Mm. You may get less calls, mm -hmm. arguably, and tell me if you think I'm wrong, mm. may get less calls. Um, but when you hit, you hit big, you hit bigger. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's like when I first went from asking for 5K on the phones, working in London, to asking for 50K, 100K, I've asked for half a mil before. But it took me that process of like, okay, half a mil, half a mil. Like saying it a few times, do you know what I mean? I think mm. that's all it is. Mm. It's just literally ripping the plaster off, isn't it? Definitely. Mm. And I think also where I think we are going mad is we're giving them a job role. And the thing is, we're really giving them a job role. There's no cap in this. Like, they get a job role. They, they, get, they get so much of a better deal than we do. <laughs> we don't even, they don't even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and people still don't buy. 100%. So like, oh, yeah, 100%. You don't even know what you're missing I, out I, I do think, as, again, um, scaling out a sales team will take our emotion away from it. And again, I hope this is not just about us, this is for anyone. I think when you scale out a sales, and I know this from experience, like now there's less emotion. When someone comes to work for you, you train them up, you get them to a certain standard, they're never gonna have the same emotion as you're gonna have. They're just never, and that's fine. But I think that can actually help sometimes because I'm basically selling me when I'm on the phone. Mm. And there, there's a difference between it. Like you said before you exited, you had to kind of take you out of it a bit 
to me, I'm assuming even for you, it would have been more emotional if it was still solely about you. Mm. Are you completely out of it now? Completely out of it. Out of interest, how, how does it look now at the moment? So they, like, are you still in the, is it not you in the video? Like, is it completely? Yeah, so, well, what we did was I used to do the YouTube videos. They were faceless, but it was like my voice. Mm -hmm. So about a year ago, I got Tom, the coach, to take over those videos. So then I was off YouTube. I used to make the ads and then I got Tom to voice the ads. So I was off the ads. Um, the rest was completely driven by, by the team. I didn't do anything apart from like management meetings, um, I would do a, I, I would do the second interview when we would hire people, so mm. I'd still do that. But right now, they are just the the PE firm that bought us. They're implementing downsells, upsells. Uh, they're starting a, a internal fund as well, so you can either buy the program or just put your money in the fund to be traded by actually the coaches, uh, Tom, Tom and Asri. That's it. That kind of thing. So they're just adding more, squeezing more juice out of the leads that kind of thing. And it kind of brings me back to where you guys are at, because if I was you, I would, I would do the three and the five thing. I would do, look, mm -hmm. five with a guaranteed role, mm -hmm. three, just the training, no role. And I would do a high level mastermind on the back end for the, the successful guys. I really want to guys. do that. Uh, it's crazy you say that. I'll, I'll definitely let you land on this, but you inspired me for that. Um, since we we met, I, I'm extreme, Will. Like I could meet you on Monday and know everything about you by Friday. That's just how I am. Especially if I think that there's value there. So yeah, I, I, he'll tell you. Like I've, the last few days, I've just been on YouTube every day, mm. studying all the guys that are now our friends as well, mm. and just learning, man, and seeing the masterminds. I said, because you was on um, what's the guy I was watching yesterday, Tyler, Tyler Newman. You were was you meant to be speaking in there? You were speaking there, right? Because I, I saw your name, but I didn't see you in that vlog. I don't think you yeah. ended up being in that vlog. Yeah. Um, and I was saying to him, bro, I want to do a mastermind. So you should. Mm. So you should. Mm. Yeah. Maybe do like for the leads that can't afford even the 3K, maybe do some kind of like mini light version for just 1K so that mm. you can still help them. Mm. Maybe you, you might. Some people don't want to do that because they yeah. feel like they're devaluing the product. Yeah. Yeah. Some people do. You yeah. know, so, so obviously you guys make that decision. Yeah. But it's nice to have that. And if, if you do implement that, I wouldn't implement it on the front end. I would let people say no on the phone. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then maybe a week later, have a setter reach out and say, look, yeah. if you do still need the help, I know that finances is the only roadblock. So we've got a light version to maybe, maybe yeah. help you. Uh, so you've yeah. got all angles. You've got the light at a K, training at three, with a higher uh, at five, yeah. and the mastermind for the big guys on the back. That's yeah. a that's a nice structure. Yeah, yeah, I like that. What's your view generally as well um, on payment plans? Curious. Yeah, so this is something that I learned from Cole Gordon. I always ask it whenever someone becomes a coaching client. I always say like, what's your revenue to cash ratio? You know, so if you do 100K in a month, rev, mm. how much do you collect in cash? Mm. And Cole taught me to always stay above 55%, you know, and the higher you can get it, the further you can scale because you've got more cash ROI to scale into, you know. Um, so that's just the balance. That's just scale in general. It's just unit economics. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, you're, so you don't shy away from them, but try and avoid them as much as you can really and just get cash through the door. Yeah. I mean, you, yeah. in an ideal world, everyone's a full pay, Yeah. yeah. you know, but, but yeah. that's just not realistic. Yeah. But you don't want everything to be a full pay because then your accounts receivable goes bloody mad and you're always Pipeline's cash good. negative. Yeah. And, you know, some of it's going to fall flat. So it's a bit of a nightmare. So yeah. I think if you can stay above like 60% cash, you know, then you're fine. Mm, yeah. Where, where would you say you guys are at? I think we're about, I reckon it, it, it's been improving. So like I said, where it's so new, it's every day it changes. But I would say now we're at about 50%, maybe just under. What One thing I have taken from Will that again, like, for people watching this as well, it's about highlighting what you've done and giving your flowers. And it's also about people being able to learn in our eyes, like from mm. where we're from. Like it, what I mean by that is like, there's people that look up to us at mm. the next level. Yeah, we're yeah. sitting at, with someone else that's, that's higher. And what I have learned is we need to know our numbers better. Yeah. We need to know our numbers better. And it's funny because it might have been his video this morning. Yeah, yeah, said, it was. Yeah, it was your, your video this morning. Said if you don't know your said numbers. It, yeah, if you don't know your numbers, you're not, you're basically not running a business basically this morning. So yeah. 
that hit and and, and and yeah, even in today's combo, like I want to be able to know the numbers. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. But again, we are so it's mad because we're so new. I feel like we're new, but we've got hot kind of quickly, like hot mm. based on perception. Um, but I would say so. Yeah, I feel like now for a month we should we should prior to about a month ago knowing the numbers would have been impossible. Impossible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now but we from can. from. November, the start of November to now, yeah. they've been relatively yeah. stable. Where so they for the next three measure. months, we'll be able to... Make... Yeah, that's true. That's another reason we don't know the numbers. It literally is brand new. We're experienced in the space, so that's why conversations can be held. But this actual offer is new. And everyone we tell is just like, bro, you've got a shit hot offer. Even Jamie, just his partner, was just like, bro, you've got a shit hot offer. And even when I said to him about the charging with the... He was like, bro, you give them a job. He yeah. actually said, what he said he was like, why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's crazy. And I, and I feel like for anyone who's building an offer out there, sometimes what you can end up doing is throwing too much in out of fear that what you've got is good enough. Yeah. And I think that is something for, for anyone getting into the space to avoid. Like, you've got to kind of rate yourself a bit. Like, you've got to know that what you bring to the table is valuable. Do you know what I mean? What, what was the negotiations like for you going through the exit? Must have been, a, must have been an interesting process. Yeah, well, um, I was way off on what I wanted. Like, because I, I didn't, before I knew anything about exiting, mm. right? I didn't know about multiples and stuff. I just thought if I could get one year's net, I'd kind of be buying a year of my time back mm. and I can go and do my next thing. So I, if you would have asked me what I wanted back then, I would have said just a year of net profit mm -hmm. in one go. Mm. Then I started working with Dominic and he priced the business for me. You know, so we went through the financials and interviewed the team and looked at the product. And he suggested 2.4x the uh, the annual net profit. Mm. And then when we were introduced to Highview, the private equity firm that actually bought us, uh, they offered 2.6. Okay. Because I guess they could see the value that even we couldn't see. Yeah, that's 2.6x. 2.6x. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if we were doing a million, they offered us yeah. uh, 2.6 million kind of yeah. thing. So and that's what we sold for. So that to 2.6x multiple, and they were really happy with that. I was really happy with that. So yeah. good times. What do you think's next? Obviously you're doing consulting now, but what's, what's next? What's the next big thing? The next big thing is closing you both on business contact. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you're aware, I'm going to we're done. Yeah, yeah, like, we're done. done. Uh, uh, if, sure. I, if, I, if I'm honest, like this conversation has, uh, it was already confirmed anyway, but I can see yeah, I get it, man. It's like the way I got into sales, same with me. If it wasn't for Charlie, I wouldn't have yeah, done yeah. well in my first year. I get it. I'm, I'm sold, all right? I'm, I'm, Thank you. I'm in. I'm, Thank I'm, you. I'm so that we wrap up now. <laughs> <laughs> Good. No, dude, like, honestly, this sounds kind of fruity um, and a bit, bit... No. The truth is, like, for the next six months, 12 months, I just want to relax, mm -hmm. have fun, be, feel fulfilled, and just, just enjoy what I'm doing, you know, and only work with people that I want to work with, you know, um, and just, just, just have fun and feel mm. fulfilled and just, mm. just enjoy it, you know? Yeah, that's, that's the goal right now, so. But fuck me, with all these calls from YouTube, I don't know what, yeah. what's going on with Do that. Do you think you're gonna pass them on to a team or you think? We're going to have to, really. Um, yeah, maybe. So the way that I'm handling it right now, because this is my bottleneck at the moment, is, de is demand. Yeah. So I've put, I've almost put the price on the survey. So the last question on the survey now is, working with William is not free and requires a multi-four-figure investment on your part. Um, do you have the financial resources to invest in your success and growth or not? Yes or no? Mm. And obviously, um, that's as close to giving the price without giving the price as, as possible. Mm. And I'm charging for a sales call now. So I'm actually getting paid to take the sales calls. Yeah. Uh, only a tiny $27, but yeah. still, that is the, the furthest I can go to stop people booking. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. I'm actually trying to stop people yeah, from asking me to, to, to fucking yeah. coach them right yeah. now, which is, which is just, just insane. Mm. But, but give thanks for that. Yeah, um, definitely. So I'm going to deal with the demand right now and take on the clients that I want to, turn away the ones that I don't want to, enjoy coaching them. Uh, I'm doing my next mastermind in April. That's a big passion project. So the mastermind is the best thing ever. That's my no, no, one. we're there. I'm, I'm putting it out there on camera. Yeah, yeah. That, we're there. You've we're got there. to do that. Dubai, right? 
Dubai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that okay. is the number one most fun, fulfilling thing that I've ever done in my life, man. Yeah. Imagine a weekend of us guys, 15 of us, oh, all swapping ideas. Yeah, oh, yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, 100%. It's the best. Even just this convo, like, this, I could do this every day. Like, yeah. this year, 100%. It's, it's so good, man. So, just feeling it out. Um, if the demand continues, I'll probably move away from one-to-one, -one, and I'll have to move to group, because I just can't do one-to-one -one yeah. with everyone like I'm doing now. Mm. So if the demand carries on, I'll probably have to move to one-to-one, -to, -one, uh, to, 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 to group, and just keep raising prices until it's just the sweet spot of people saying yes and no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is another thing I learned from Cole Gordon. He was like, you don't want your close rate to be too high. He said, if you're closing above 30%, your price is, is too cheap. You know? So he said, to use the close rate as a gauge, and right mm. now I'm, I'm genuinely closing. I looked at it earlier, it's like 58.7%. So every other person buys, which is not a good thing. Yeah. You know, you want some people to say no. And my, my sure, price that's is That's us high. as well, man. Isn't it? That's us. So. Qualified, they just go. Like, we don't really have a problem. And that's not just me, like, bigger, bigger myself up. I think it is because the price is too low. Yeah. To mm. be honest, I think it's a steal. They know it's a yeah, steal. Yeah, it's, it's, I feel like price can sometimes, where we're priced at is kind of good for our ego. Mm. It's like people come through to say yes. Yeah, oh, that's very true. Day. That's very true. It's like, let's go through some days. Get where, some people saying But then, no. again, like I said, I would argue that, but the reason it's like that is because we're coming off of two months of shit. So now, yeah. at least let me feel a bit happy. Yeah, yeah, it's survival to abundance. Yeah. You've got to go through it for, I think, but it's good, man. I think next year, we're excited. Like, I'm excited about where we're heading. I'm excited about the new connections we've made. Like, even like talking about this mastermind, this is all a whole new world to me. So like, I'm super excited, like, Super, super excited. I think yeah. connecting with people like yourself, James, Joss, like even um, all the combos we had, Jamie, like big up those guys. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful, bro. And yeah, grateful man. that you even gave us time as well today to go through everything because I know you've given us some, some, some gems game. in there. Yeah, you, you done, you done the right, you got done the sales pitch. We're done. Don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll be calling you very shortly. He's yes, got his um, arm away. Yeah, yeah, 100%. But yeah, now let's, for everyone out there watching, like I am personally saying, check this guy's YouTube out. Like there's so much gems in such a short space of time. Like I've known the guy for like a week, bro. And I've learned so much of his YouTube, bro. It's mental, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know what, as well, as someone who takes content very seriously, I, I, again, like I said at the beginning, I see myself and what I put out there is very valuable. Very rarely do I look at other people and be like, isn't it? Like I'm not the biggest fan of everyone, but I've been watching your stuff and it's yeah. sick, bro. Like, it's very sick. So, credit where it's due, man. And thank you for coming on. 100%. Giving us your time, my brother. Can't thank you guys enough, man. F future legends. My brother. You heard it there from the legends, yeah? Come on, cut the crap. We out. Peace. <laughs>